Welcome everyone, our viewers and supporters throughout the whole world. We want to thank you and appreciate of your uh, prayers for our ministry. Our topic for today is common. I have entitled it, Why Jesus Was Condemned to Die by the Jewish Religious Leaders. It's a simple question. But in general, many people did not know what's the, what are the reasons why Jesus died. Why religious leaders maligned, persecuted, oppressed, wanted to destroy, and finally killed Jesus? Because when we understand what happened to our Lord and his disciples, we would appreciate God's love, patience, grace. Jesus passed this all. So the, the most groiling and the most paradoxical question of all the time is the next question. Why King Herod wanted to kill Jesus when he was born? It's incredible. King versus an infant? That is a groiling question. Helpless versus powerful? Think. So it is a common knowledge that Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world. But countless did not know the many different specific reasons why the Jewish religious leaders, God's own people, maligned, persecuted, blasphemed, oppressed, wanted to destroy wanted to get rid of the king of glory. They want to kill him. Is this not the most groiling paradoxical question of all the time that every Christian should know and ask? What are the theological reasons behind? It is only human element? Or are there any other forces involved? Can we find the utmost answer in that it is written, the word of God? There are so many reasons. Among others, let me first put the partial and initial. Among other reasons are the following. Jesus had astounding claims that he made. The works that the Lord did that were against the Jewish leader's own standard. They wanted Jesus to go with their standard of measurement of religious life. Jesus' religion was a friend to theirs. So it was a great threat to their survival and identity of religious belief and system. Jesus' life, character of righteousness and holiness was offensive to their way of life of hypocrisy. And the questionable people, the hopeless, the outcasts in the religious circle with whom Jesus has socialized. Just imagine you are condemned because of socialization. Jesus' lack of respect and value of their religious traditions customs and law as a replacement of God's word. So from the surface to an in-depth answer, these are initial, partial answer. We will see, learn, and read the record in the scriptures why religious leaders wanted to destroy Jesus, which he did not deserve. There are horizontal levels of understanding which could be observed and felt by human senses. 
we will also attempt to provide appropriate consideration because initial and partial answers are not complete without digging the deeper into the whole revelation, the vertical levels of understanding both material and spiritual things that are beyond human senses. What I mean, let's look at on the horizontal level, let's also look at the vertical, which is spiritual. Struggle. Let's go to the horizontal. The first question. Why Herod wanted to kill Jesus when he was born? The question, the answer to this question is found in Genesis. When Adam and Eve fall into sin in the Garden of Eden, it says... God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Genesis 3.15. This verse, in fact, the Bible in its entirety is an outgrowth and folding of it from this chapter to the end of the book of Revelation. So, enmity runs in three ways. Serpent versus woman. Seed between versus seed. Serpent versus the seed. Though the enmity between the woman and the serpent, between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, the primary enmity is between the serpent and the woman's seed. This enmity started in heaven and resume on earth and it will not end until the serpent cast into the lake of fire. So, what do you mean by enmity? It is a perpetual intense opposition or hatred of the enemy. So Genesis 3.15 says that according to the revelation, the serpent, the dragon was cast out. The serpent, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. In the process of this battle, Satan will be successful in striking Jesus' heel on the cross. But he is going to crush the serpent's head. So the devil, by all means, and all possible suspect as a seed, he would destroy. So, who is represented by the seed of the serpent? At the beginning of the story in Genesis, Cain was killed by his brother Abel. He spoken of being as the wicked one. 1 John 3.12, meaning to say, because there was already a prophecy, Genesis 3.15, that the seed of the woman will come. And will crush your head. And you will bruise his heel. And so the devil don't want to be killed. So he killed first. Whom he suspect as the seed. So since Abel was so righteous and kind. And then he influenced Cain to kill his brother. And so 1 John 3.12 says that. Cain is of the wicked one. The devil was behind Cain in killing his brother. As prospective seed that was prophesied to crush the serpent hid. He was mistaken. But God's plan were not to be thwarted because he gave Adam and Eve another seed. From whose line the Messiah would eventually come. Genesis 4.25 So, all possible lines of the seed would be destroyed. Any prospect, Satan wanted to kill them. And that's why Jesus says, he said to his enemies, you are your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who murdered Abel? It's Cain. Cain was a murderer used by the devil. And so in the parable of the Parable of the wheat and the tares. The tares are the sons of the wicked. One. These are the supporters of Satan. Matthew 13, 13. 13. 
the promise and the prophesied said fully arrived. Who is Christ? Galatians 3.16. The seed in the fullness of thine have come. God sent forth his son, born of a woman under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. So the serpent had killed already many as he suspected the promised seed. We find that in Exodus. We find the woman, Jochebed. We find the seed, Moses. So the dragon stood before the woman in the church who was ready to give birth to the bore her child as soon as so meaning to for centuries the devil killed those whom he suspected in the line where the Messiah would come. And so Herod, when Jesus was born, was behind him was the devil. So Herod the king was used undercover by the serpent in attempting to kill the seed. As soon as Jesus was born, Satan influenced and used King Herod as undercover to kill the child. An angel warned that Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Matthew 2.13 So Herod was exceedingly angry. He sent forth and put to death all male children who were in Bethlehem and in all his district from two years old under Matthew 2.16. So the enmity in Genesis 3.15 continue as the dragon raids against Jesus from birth to the cross. God's enemy used all means to get rid of the promised seed that would cross his head. He used religious leaders, sad to say, God's own people. By his almost imperceptible deception. He used some of the Lord's disciples, as we say it later, even Satan himself undercover as an angel of light. Look at the temptation of Jesus. The temptation is hidden with intention to kill Jesus. The first temptation in the wilderness was addressed immediately the physical needs of Jesus. He was hungry after 40 days of fasting. There was a subtle element of doubt of the Lord's identity. If you are the son of God. So, questioning, doubting his identity as the son of God. The second, but in Luke, is in the third. Was in the city of Jerusalem. This was the Lord's territory. Because the temple was built for his name and praise and honor. But the question of divine identity entails doubt with assurance of God's promise. He said, throw yourself down under the guise of pre suicide as not to reach to the cross and cross his head. The enemy of God, one who is disguised an angel from heaven, he claimed to have commission from God to declare that Christ passes an end. This is what Ellen White. So he came to Jesus as if an angel of light from heaven that the Father commissioned him to tell him your fast has ended. Though it appears an angel of light, the first words betray his character. A similar temptation to Eve in the Garden of Eden. For the tempter's word were truth, but his manner of speaking, there was a disguised contempt. For the words of God. The Sarah of Ages 180. So, one of the most recent reasons that Jesus was hated, persecuted, maligned, want to be killed by the Jewish leaders because of his outstanding, unique, exclusive claim. Jesus had seven outstanding direct claims. He said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection and life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am true vine. No one has done that. It's unique. It means that salvation is 
really only and only and only in Jesus Christ. However, there are other indirect claims of Jesus as the Son of God, John 9.35, which was confirmed by the Father. The Father says, this is my Son. He claims to be the Messiah. To love him more than our close family members. He will come with the glory of angels to reward men of their works. This is the claim of Jesus. He open accept worship as he claim as God. Which is all claims are true. The claims that abhorred, detested, execrated religious Jewish leaders. We we'll look at those claims which inflame the brains of religious leaders. These are breathtaking claims that infuriated the Jewish religious leaders. Jesus said to them, I, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. What's wrong with that claim? He was true. I am. Then, they took up stone to throw at him. They're going to kill him. This claim is equated Jesus with I am in Exodus chapter 3 verses 14 and 15. Because he was really the I am in Exodus. Now assuming human flesh, he says before Abraham was I am. The claim was so serious. That execrated and abhorred by the scribe and Pharisee, ready to destroy Jesus by stoning. For in their view, it was a capital sin and it deserved capital punishment. But the claim is true. Second, Jesus is equal with God. Jesus claimed. I'm the good shepherd, the door of the sheep. As Jesus said, I and my father and one. This declaration clearly incensed religious leaders. Then the Jews took a stone again to stone him. And Jesus said to them, many good works I have shown to you from my father. For which of those work do you stone me? The Jewish leader answered, Saying, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. But the claim is absolutely true. Here is a problem. Among the Jewish, so religious, there's a problem. Again, the third is the most divisive claim because Jesus claimed to forgive sin. Jesus said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes who were sitting there, reasoning in their hearts, Why this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sin but God? But immediately Jesus perceived in the spirit and the reason thus with himself. He said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or see, arise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sin. And he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose and took up his bed. And he went in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God. We never saw anything like this, but the Pharisee, their brain were in flame. He can forgive sin because he is God. Another. When Jesus cleansed the temple twice. Early in his ministry and towards the end of his ministry. God's business turned into religious money making business. So Jesus cleansed the temple on two occasions. Now, the Passover of the Jews was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found the temple of those who sold oxen, sheep, doves, the money changer, doing business. 
When he had made the whip of cords, he dropped them out of the temple with the sheep and oxen and poured out the, the changers of money and overturned their tables. And he said, Hosol Dabs, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then the disciple remembered it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. John chapter 2 verses 13 to 17. Jesus pointed to them their religious hypocrisy. The religious leader covered up their own money-making business in the guise of religion of doing things, a smoke screen. So Jesus, on the second occasion, they wanted immediately to kill Jesus. Why interfering their lucrative religious business in the temple? Destroy Jesus. Mark narrates that Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple, overturned the tables of the money changers, and the seat of those who sold doves, and he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temples. Then he taught them, saying, It's not written, My house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations, but you made it a den of thieves. That is a sharp arrow words. Because the religious leaders have a lucrative business in the guise of religion. His actions were decisive. His word was piercing as he cleansed the temple with divine anger and jealousy. He was a threat to their business. And look, Mark eleven eighteen. And the scribe and the chief priest heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all people were astonished at his teaching. Just imagine. No reason. Everything Jesus did was correct and perfect. But they don't want Jesus to mingle, interfere their business. Another reason. Breaking the Sabbath day. And this time, two issues. Breaking the Sabbath day and he was claiming to be equal with God. But that is not true. Especially the breaking. Equal with God, yes. So Jesus held the man in the pool of Bethesda. Then he asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was. Because Jesus immediately left. And later on he knew it was Jesus. So he told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on Sabbath. But Jesus answered to them, My father has been working until now, and I've been working. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. John 5, verses 12 to 18. Jesus, as the creator of man and the author of the Sabbath, did not violate anything. Did you see? I'm playing the word persecuted, kill, destroy. You need to remember, these are religious people, leaders, claiming to be God's people. What is this? Because many of us have understood Jesus died for our sin. But look what the Jewish leaders, religious leaders have done to Jesus. Persecute. Wants to kill, wants to destroy, wants to get rid because of all. That is injustice. So, another, another Sabbath. I just get the highlight. A withered man in the synagogue. The Pharisee watched him closely, whether he would heal him on Sabbath day, so that they might accuse him. Mark 3. Verses 1 and 2. Jesus asked, Is lawful on Sabbath to do good or evil? To save life or kill? So they all keep quiet. 
So Jesus said to the man, stretch your hand, and his hand was restored. Then the Pharisee went out immediately and plotted with the Herodians against him how he might destroy. Doing good thing you destroy. Saving life you destroy. Jesus had suffered a lot. In the hands of religious leaders. Another reason. Religious leaders want him to be killed because he was stealing the truth. In John 8, there are four topics that resulted in a hated theological reasoning behind biblical arguments between Jesus, the scribe, and the Pharisee. The first one, the Alice woman caught in adulterous act. The second, the scribes, and walking in darkness. Then the Pharisee questioned Jesus for claims that he was short of evidence and he enumerated the witnesses. The third, he claims to set them free from sin. He claims as the I am. It records, no one laid hands on him for his hour has not yet. So Jesus said, you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. You seek me, a man who has told you the truth. And his I am claims the talk stones to throw at him. Just imagine that. Just for telling the truth, you kill a person. And we have many today. Jesus was innocent. He loves people. He loves to heal them. He loves really to care for them. And look at these religious leaders. Another. By telling the truth that they failed as chosen people of God. And since they have not fulfilled the purpose of God, God will give it to other nations, which is the Gentiles after the Pentecost. The parable of the bind raiser in Matthew 21, 33, 46, which illustrates God the Father sending his servant to get, the, to get the fruits, but instead the bind raiser beat, killed, and stoned them. The same happened with another group of servants. The last of all the owners sent his son, saying to them, Oh, they will respect my son. But when the bind raiser saw the son, they said among themselves, Oh, this is an ear. Let us come and kill him and seize his inheritance. And Jesus said, The kingdom of God will take him from you and will give him to a nation bearing fruits, that is the Gentiles. They lost because they have not fulfilled God was telling the truth. What was the reaction of the chief, chief priests and the Pharisees? The chief priests and Pharisees heard his parable. They perceived that he was speaking on them. And when they sought to lay hands on them, because there was a multitude, because they took him for a prophet. Just imagine that. Where can you find in the world? My brothers and sisters, if you look at Jesus, from his birth to the cross, nothing, a period or a comma, that he deserved to death. But look at the religious leaders. Hatred and jealousy. Because many people believe in him. When Lazarus was raised back to life by Jesus, then many Jews would come to Mary because you want to see the things Jesus have done to Lazarus, many believe him. John eleven forty five. As a result, the Pharisee and the chief priests counseled together and asked, what we shall do? This man works many signs. If we will let him alone and everyone believe in him, the Romans will come, take away our place and our nation. Then Caiaphas says and prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. Just imagine that. Because you lost followers. Hatred and jealousy. And listen. From that day, they plotted to put him to death. Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command. If any knew where he was, he should report it that they might seize him. 
terrified of losing followers. That is jealousy, hatred. Jesus was not telling them. He was just telling the truth. And as a result, hatred. Another reason is messianic claims, which create political agitation. There were political reasons that religious leaders wanted Jesus destroyed. There was unstable situation between the Jews and the Romans. Because the thought of a Messiah whom he led up uprising against Rome. As history recorded, the Messiah's role was dual. He would deliver from the Romans and he had also a message from God. Jewish history recorded three false Messiah before the birth of Jesus. Judas in BC 44, Judah in BC 48 in Galilee, and you find this in Acts, and Atronges, BC 23, in Emmaus, and just before Jesus was born, Simon in Peria, this Messiah, false Messiah claim. There was a battle between the Romans. So anything's about claiming to be a Messiah. There's only one. That's why John suspected them that he was a Messiah. John did not say because this as strong as in Emmau, Simon, in Peria, Judas, in Judah, and in Galilee, we find them that it will irritate political agitation. So the Jewish leader learned the hard lesson. Besides, Jesus' claim as a Messiah means his authority surpass, undermine their authority, rank and loss, honor and respect. Jesus, as a Messiah, works mighty miracles. So the Pharisee went out immediately and plotted with Herodians how he might destroy. Just imagine that. Many of us are acquainted. Jesus for died of our sin. But before he died on the cross, he suffered a lot. Political religious reasons. Although religious leaders did not recognize nor believe Jesus was the Messiah, yet others believed that he was the son of David, meaning the coming Messiah. This infuriated him. Therefore, many of the crowd. When they heard the saying said, truly this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ, the Messiah. Then the officers came to the chief priests and the Pharisees who said to them, why you have not brought him? The officer says, no man spoke like this. And the Pharisee answered, you are also deceived that he is a Messiah. Have any of the rulers of the Pharisee believed him? But the crowd does not know that the law is cursed. The leaders thought that some who believed was due to their ignorance. With the council consultation in Lazarus racing to life, Kayapa says, Now the Romans will come and will take our place and our nation because this man claimed to the Messiah because previous 30 years back there was Fierce battle between the Romans and the Messiahs just before Jesus was born. So Jesus, they want to destroy him because of healing. And not only that, they attributed his healing to satanic activities. Can you know picture? How Jesus suffered in the hands of religious leader who claims to be the people of God. Several healing miracles of Jesus were attributed to satanic powers. And they want to get rid of him. In the healing of man with a withered hand on Sabbath, immediately the Pharisee plotted to destroy him. In the Paul of Batista, they raised on the Jews. They want to sow to kill him. When Jesus said, my father has been working now, now they want to kill him the more. Much more they broke the Sabbath. Can you just imagine? 
Let's now go to social and domestic issues. Those are biggest issues. But let's look at this. I call this nonsense. But to them, it makes sense. So, conflict with social and domestic issues. Social ethical issues compared modeling. The scribe and the Pharisee probably were jubilant when Jesus told them, when a sinning brother refuses to hear the church, let him be like a heathen, a tax collector. Wow. So the Pharisee, amen, amen. So tax collector, a heathen, those who will not believe, listen to the church. The Pharisee wanted to be a model and imitated of the righteousness to the tax collector. This is clear when the Pharisee went to the temple. Because he wanted to show to the tax collector that he was the best. He should be a model not like the tax collector who are corrupt. So, why not follow their social and ethical standard? With this reason, they hated Jesus for having another questionable standard and do not respect their tradition. Because this is a modification that is found in Deuteronomy 21, verses 20 and 21. So, social and ethical issues. The religious leaders cannot accept Jesus' character, action in socializing sinners, and abhor outcasts of Jewish society. They wanted Jesus to be on their side as an extreme separatist, an indication of being chosen, being a holy tribe, descendant of Abraham. Jesus had been accused and maligned like John the Baptist. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, glutton, wine, biber, a friend of tax collector and sinners. Can you imagine the label of Jesus in social domestic conflict? He says, glutton. What do you mean by glutton and wine biber? The first two words, glutton, means voracious eater. Wine biber means drunkard. Was not under the ring. It means a person with insatiable, uncontrollable thirst to drink. Drunkard. But there was not enough evidence. It's simply by association to these people. Can you imagine that? You label Jesus as a glutton person, voracious eater, uncontrollable drunkard. They, they have no evidence. But they don't want Jesus to associate because by association, they are contaminated by sin. So the accuser were expert in judging by external appearance that Jesus as friend of tax collectors and sinners. Ah, they hated the sinners, the prostitute, the tax collector. But if you try to look at the gospel, you will find why Jesus associated them. These have already qualified. Why? They have heard the message of John the Baptist. They have confessed and repented their sins. Yes, tax collectors were greedy, evil, corrupt, and deceitful. But they came to John to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And John said, Collect no more what is appointed for you. With soldiers, ask the same question. Say, Do not eh, intimidate anyone or accuse falsely. Be content with your wages. Then they came to Jesus. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew to him and here. Because they have already have the seeds of truth from the preaching of John the Baptist. So many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. They were thirsty and hungry in the word of God. So they were filled. Tax collectors and sinners became disciples of Jesus. 
So Jesus says, when all the people hear this, he says, even tax collector justified by God. Having been baptized with the baptism of John, but the Pharisee and lawyers rejected the counsel for themselves, not having been baptized by him. Oh, did you understand? The sinner, the prostitute, the tax collectors hear the message of John the Baptist and they were baptized, but not a single Pharisee and scribe were baptized. Meaning to say, they did not believe that John's work was from God. So many tax collectors and sinners also together with Jesus, his five, and they followed him. Because they are Jesus' disciples. They already repented. They have new way of life. But the Pharisees and the scribes, the religious leaders, don't want Jesus to associate with his people. It was shocking and a bombshell to a religious leader when Jesus said, As surely I say to you, tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came in the very way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collector and harlots believed. When you saw it, you did not after one relent and believe him. So Jesus was right. Tax collectors, harlots, and sinners who have repented of the preaching of John the Baptist and came to him become his disciples. But none of the religious. Just imagine you will be killed because you associate. There's something wrong in the brain. Something wrong religious orientation. Let's go to social and domestic ethical issue. Han washing. Social standard or criteria washing of hands become an intense issue. For the Pharisee and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands. In a special way, holding traditions of the elders. It includes receiving, holding, washing cup, pitchers, copper vessels, and coaches. Mark 7 verses 3 and 4. They were greatly offended that some of Jesus' disciples eating and washed hands, which was tantamount to defilement. And Jesus justified his disciple and put down the man-made tradition. All too well to reject commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. And they are making void the word of God no effect through your tradition. This is very strong. Just imagine tradition becomes more powerful than the word of God. That's why Jesus told them, you are hypocrites. Today, many people read it differently. The issue is hand washing and turns out to be eating unclean animal food. What a worse interpretation, worse than the Pharisee and scribe. I admit that kind of people. Oh, everything is clean according to Jesus. Look, it's not about food. It's about hand washing. What a mind darkened with sin. The issue is hand washing and you turn it into food, eating. You're like the Pharisee. So those are the mutual. Reason why Jesus was malign, blasphemed, and there is no righteous reason of the Jewish leaders. Now let's go to Judas. Because he was the pinnacle. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He connived with religious leaders. You have to remember, Judas the sumo malum. The summum bonum is the greatest good, but Judas was the greatest of all evil. Why? The chief priests and scribes have difficulty how to kill Jesus. So they sought how he might kill him. And you know, it has passed over time. Thousands and thousands of people from different parts of the world came to Jerusalem to attend. Just imagine on the throne, 
It was Judas' personal initiative. He went to the chief priest and betrayed him to them. So when they heard it, they were so happy. Now we have here. And they promised them to give money. So he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Judas asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And the Pharisee and the chief priest says, counted them 30 pieces of silver. So from that time on, Judas sought opportunity to betray him. What was the position of Judas that he held among the 12 disciples? 30 pieces of silver? He has more than that in his money box. Judas was a treasurer. When Mary Magdala poured out the expensive spikenard perfume on Jesus' feet, Judas asked, why this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii? And give him to the poor. He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He had the money box. And he used to take or steal what was put in it. Just imagine. He was the cashier. The treasurer. And yet he was not contented of what he had stolen. He went. And ask the price for Jesus. Because he witnessed the miracle of Jesus. And in his perception, Jesus could resist because of his miracle. Judas, as a money keeper, had possibly more than 30 pieces silver in the money box. The price which he paid his own personal and eternal destruction. Paul says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money, it's the love. When Judas shook, Jesus condemned. He was remorseful and returned the money. According to Matthew 27, verses 3 and 5, it was useless, too late. The devil was triumphant through him. Jesus was sold, sentenced to death. If you try to look at the gospel, it's so interesting. Jesus, see, Judas always listed in the end of the listing of the 12 disciples. Don't you know Judas is a very beautiful name, meaning the praise one, the chosen one, the special one. But he was always on the last with the disgracing stigma as a betrayer or a traitor. Since Judas sold the savior of the world of 30 pieces of silver. He was the final accomplice of the chief priests for illegal arrest of Jesus. He was the henchman of Satan. Of Judas the savior declared bluntly. Did I not choose you 12 of you? One of you is the devil? John 6.17 and it was Satan. Satan entered Judas when he received the money. Luke 20, 22, 3. During the Last Supper, he also, Satan entered. So three times, it means to say he was living with Jesus and his disciples doing ministry, ordained to the ministry. He saw a lot of miracles, but his heart was corrupt. Judas opened his heart to be used by the devil. So Satan's mission to deceive was perfectly accomplished through religious leaders and Judas. So in the Passion Week, it was so intense. The highest religious leaders finally succeeded because Judas was the final accomplice. Sad to say. In the inner circle of Jesus Christ. During the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the chief priests and scribes sought how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. Again, the chief priest counsel to sought the testimony against to put Jesus to death and found none. 
In Gethsemane, Jesus was arrested like a notorious criminal with a great multitudes with sword and clubs came from the priests and elders of the people. In the council, it was night. Now the chief priests and elders, all the council, sought a false testimony against Jesus to put him to death. In the morning, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel Jesus to put him to death. He repeated, so intense. And again, but the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that she should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Did you see it from birth to the cross? It's not the ordinary people who betray, who malign, who oppress, who persecuted, who wanted Jesus to be destroyed because of his good works, of what he claims. Can we understand that? Religious killers? That's why John says, 1 verse 11, He came to his own. His own did not receive him. It is clear that there was nothing, anything good, godly, righteous, that the religious leader wanted to put Jesus to death. They were blinded by religious hypocrisy, pride, and arrogance as Abraham's descendants. They did not want anymore to hear any truth from God. They could have accept all, they could not accept all the works of miracles accompanied with signs and wonder as a signature of God. Instead, attributed the works to the devil. Hatred and jealousy had no foundation except a threat to their authority and cannot accept Jesus was greater than theirs. Jesus, in their overall verdict, deserved nothing but death. The religious, powerful tradition becomes a man-made measurement of the way of life, replacing the authority of the Word of God. Thus, salvation turned out to be work-centered rather than love and faith-centered. Just imagine during... The interrogation and trials of Jesus. Leaders of Rome. Pilate declared, I have found no fault in this man. He repeated it again. I have found no reason for death in him. Luke 23 verse 14 and 22. Pilate categorical say declared, I find no fault him at all. Herod had the same declaration. He said, I have found no fault. Indeed, nothing worthy of death. Luke twenty two fifteen. No crime, no sin, no fault. Absolutely no reason to be condemned to die. What an absolute injustice. To the religious leaders, no less. Jesus deserved death. These are people who claim God's people. But in actuality, they were the devil's most effective agents. The enemy deceived them to the utmost because they have not loved and served Jesus. But indirectly, they served Satan, rendered him the best services they could offer to destroy the Savior of the world. They claim to be the sons of light, but they are not. Their works show that they are the sons of disobedience, the sons of the prince of darkness. From the pen of inspiration, that from Bethlehem to Calvary, Satan works to destroy Jesus. It is possible way he sought to prevent Jesus from developing perfect childhood, faultless manhood, a holy ministry, and blame his sacrifice, but Satan was defeated. He could not lead Jesus into sin. He could not discourage him or drive him from his work he came down on earth to do. From desert to Calvary, the storm of Satan's wrath beat upon him. 
the more mercilessly it fell, the more firmly the Son of God cling to the hand of his Father and prays on the blood-stained path. All efforts of Satan to oppress and overcome him only to be brought out the purer light of his spotless character. All heaven and an unfallen world had been witness on this controversy. On the works of the three, the, of the chief priest, the high priest, the religious leader, the pen of inspiration says, it saw the prince's works of Satan and his powers over the hearts of men. Meaning to say, all these religious leaders has been used by Satan and they were all deceived and they are the best agents in destroying Jesus in the end. Typological events in the end time. Jesus was sentenced to death by religious leaders. The paradox of all mystery was why they have not consulted the scripture as the foundation of all moral religious decision? The law of God is clear as a known day. Jesus died only because of violation of that one law. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. This has been violated by the religious leader in Jesus' day. All of those are false. Witness, not one. Pilate and Herod. No fault. Does not deserve. They hired and paid people who will tell false testimony. And the Bible is keep on saying the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Why they have not consulted? Then they use their unsanctified reason, their authority, position, and ranks to judge and condemn the innocents. Is this not happening today around the world? Be extra careful religious leaders, especially in judging of matters of importance. It should be beyond reasonable doubt because what you measure in your subjective judgment, it will be measured back to you unless you repent. Those in the sacred position should read the history of Jesus. The events what happened. The pen of inspiration says, those in authority should manifest the spirit of Christ. They should weigh the Holy Spirit. A man position does not make him one that title greater in the sight of God. It is character alone that God values. Your office do not make you greater in the sight of God. It is your character. God requires those he has given the sacred trust. That is the officers, the leaders, to rise to full height of responsibilities. Man is placed here in the world on test and trial. Those who are given the position of trust must decide whether to exalt self or their maker. No other choice. If you play the two, you are like the religious leaders in the time of Jesus. Whether they will oppress, use their power to oppress their fellow men or to exalt and glorify God. She said, but some, as soon as they are placed in secret position of trust, they regard themselves as great men. They thought if entertained, ends the desire for divine enlightenment, which is only possible thing that can be made men great. The Lord sets men in responsible places, not to act out of their own will, but his will. Position does not give holiness of character. It is by honoring God and obeying his command that makes a man made truly great. Let's look at the moral lessons from God's apostatized religious leaders during the time of Jesus. 
the religious leaders in their bigotry, tyranny, stubbornness, hatred, and cruelty to Jesus and his disciples had a retributive justice. The pen of inspiration says, God has withdrawn his restraining power from Satan and his angels, and the nation was left to the control of the leaders he has chosen, Satan. They became satanic in their cruelty. The fear of God was no longer disturbed them. Satan was as the head of the nation, and its high civil and religious authority were under his sway. Jesus died in the hands of those who are zealous in their claim to be a true worshiper, serving as people of God. This is a great hijack in the gospel freeway. But on the cross, when Jesus said on earth, it is finished, the whole heaven in the loudest shout of eternal victory for salvation of man. Then I hear the loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God, the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. He was defeated. Satan had used all those leaders, including Judas. He thought he was on a victory, but no. Satan was defeated. His kingdom that he usurped from Adam was lost. Jesus took it back. The last link of sympathy between heaven and the heavenly world was broken. Satan charges that God's arbitrary, that he command his creatures, commandment that he cannot keep was totally exposed lies that he deceived the third of the angels in heaven and he is the deceiver of the whole world. He is behind all religious leaders and action and decision in crucifying Jesus. He started to evade that the seed would cross his head. My brothers and sisters, ponder and reflect how Jesus passed in the hands of religious leaders. Nothing. He does not deserve. It was good when they are the hands of the sinners, the Gentiles, those who believe of God. But sad to say, the paradox of all paradox and mystery is in the hands who claim to be the chosen people of God. Jesus suffered a lot. He was persecuted, maligned, blasphemed, humiliated, not treated as human. What a lot. When he died on the cross, you find what he says. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they have done. That's an utter expression of love and grace to a lost sinner. Today, since we know what's the reason, let us reflect. Because we might do the same. God will bless us. This is my prayer.